mother household. I was raised by a single mother myself. Most kids who are raised by a single mother or raised in a step family, for instance, you know, turn out okay. That's that's in fact true. At the same time, though, and we have to be, I think, very honest about acknowledging this. Kids who are raised outside of an intact married household are much more likely to experience problems. I've done a lot of work looking at trends in the U.S., um, showing that kids who are reared outside of an intact married family are more likely to suffer from things like poverty, child abuse, um, depression, delinquency, etc. I think a social contract is a great metaphor for the relationship between adults and children in a society. Where I think things are uh, less happy is in the general sense that adults have an obligation to children generally. Definitely not fair for the children, and uh, I, I think that the children um, are not necessarily going to. Uh, come through with their part of the social contract either. When we have a divorce culture, and even a single, uh, overall, a more general single parent culture, what we are really saying is that the happiness of adults uh, is so much uh, more important than the well-being of children. I think that uh, in this uh, generation of uh, current young adults, there's a great deal of awareness that the older generations haven't done very well by them. The sexual revolution also has meant that um, it's it's not as um, it's not as socially stigmatized for um, women to have children while unmarried. It used to signal that they were having sex while they weren't married. Well, duh. The result of all this is that the percentage of out of wedlock births uh, grows, and now is up to nearly forty percent. Um, young women, women who, who find themselves pregnant, don't have a suitable spouse, have the baby anyway. Well, when so many children are born out of wedlock, they tend, not always, but they tend to not get as much parental investment and involvement in the very early stages. The family is a key for the generation of human capital, moral capital, and social capital. Now, since learning begets learning, you start out with less learning there, and then you can't learn as much in, in, when you're three, four, five, six, seven. And when you don't have as much when you're seven, you, you can't learn as much when you're eight. Economies to register growth, to show growth, need three, these three elements. Otherwise, productivity, uh, the environment where the market operates and economic activities take place is uh, jeopardized. And in those formative periods, the family structure, all the studies suggest, is not the only factor you know, evolved, but it's, it's certainly important. So yes, those children born in those environments are at a significant disadvantage compared to children born in traditional two-parent caring families who spend a lot of time with them when they're young, and by age six or seven, they're way ahead of the other children. I have for some time been researching the idea of sustainable development and the family. And my basic idea that you cannot have uh, sustainable development if you don't have a sustained family. This is where it gets weird, though, is who's reproducing, right? The problem is we have, this is the, the demographic economic paradox. Those who can best sustain a large family are not having those large families. And those who can least sustain a large families tend to have more children. Income inequality is growing and those with lower levels of income are those typically with less stable and less two parent families which exacerbates the disadvantage of those children. Over time the, the range of disadvantage is growing and the degree of dispersion in our society for the, the children at the one end of the spectrum and the other is greater. You have a significant fraction of children, maybe 20, 25 percent of the children, who are not prepared to engage in the modern economy. They don't have the skills to do so, cognitive and non-cognitive. And the average child, even the average capable child, it's very difficult to overcome that disadvantage. 
And that's, I think, one of the major consequences of the family structure and this whole problem of learning begets learning and neglect at early ages is compounded at later ages. One of the questions, of course, is whether or not these same kinds of trends are applicable to Europe. Um, because particularly in Northern Europe, one of the big differences between um, Northern Europe and the United States is the generosity of the welfare state. The state makes much more investment in children, in daycare, in subsidies for mothers, and in many, all sorts of different ways tries to smooth the conflict between work and family that makes it very hard for many people to have the children that they want. What my research is, is indicating um, is that that's not the case. There certainly is less of an impact on poverty um, when marriage breaks down in Northern Europe. But on the other indicators, things like depression, delinquency, suicide, um, we see similar trends in countries like, for instance, Sweden. While these are surely unintended consequences, it begins to seem as if nothing will be spared by the storms of demographic winter. A lot of people I've talked to about this say, well, isn't, that, isn't it great if the birth rate is going down because, after all, that's uh, fewer f carbon footprints and uh, less stress on, on Mother Earth. Uh, not thinking about uh, that they, how much their own care is going to cost when they get older. In the past, when people talk about the environment issues uh, due to human activities, they usually use uh, human population size or human population growth rate as a indicators of a human impact on the environment. This has to do with the fads and the way we frame our problems. And right now, the framing is very much about global warming and population density, sprawl, and that kind of thing. And I don't mean to say that those things don't matter, but that doesn't mean that other things don't matter and that we're not facing social and economic problems that are uh, also related, related to, to population decline. What we find um, uh, is that globally, actually, the number of households has been increased much faster than number of people. Divorce creates more households. You would use more resources. And uh, in the meantime, you also create more greenhouse gases. If the uh, efficiency of resource use in divorced household is the same as married household, then in 2005 alone, U.S. could save 73 billion kilowatt uh, hour of electricity and also can sell more than 600 billion gallons of water in 2005 alone in the United States. It turns out, however, there is academic hope for the demographic winter from recent findings about a very old institution. In 1990, the vast majority of academics in the social sciences held, not that the data held, but the people in the social sciences, the professors, held that really family didn't make too much difference. The big issue was the income in the family. Uh, then the more you looked at the data, you know, others were saying, no, the structure makes a difference. And what's behind the structure, which is the love, the belonging or the rejection, that makes a difference. That started an academic debate. And those who investigated, who were on the other side of the debate, actually, gradually, the, the really good number crunchers, the top social scientists, follow the data, and a decade to 15 years later, the verdict is in among the top academics. Marriage does make a difference. And the evidence is very strong. It's just as conclusive as social science evidence uh, ever is. All the evidence is, is very, very clear. It's married biological parents, which is the gold standard. Social scientists who are doing the numbers crunching uh, agree that uh, many of these recent changes have had some very negative consequences. Um, denying that is not going to solve the problems. 
top researchers now know a couple of ironic reasons why it never needed to have happened, at least as widely as it has. I looked specifically at the people who said they were unhappy.